How are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm no longer at school. Mm -hmm. In um, the new house. In the new house. Wow. Wild. That's is a big deal. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Big house. We currently have five animals in the house because we're dog thing for Robin and Devin. Oh. Um. What kind of dog? He's like a, he's a Cavapoo, so he's a King Cavalier Spaniel mixed with a poodle. He's like a little, beige, <laughs> dense, poodly boy. Oh, okay. Um, you said Cavapoo? Yeah, I did say Cavapoo. <laughs> That's a great a word. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's one out of ten. Well, I don't know if Max is joining us, so I think we can get started. Grand. He's in Florida, so... Good for him. Yes, he's visiting his grandmother, not partying on the beaches. Tough. Which is oh, lame. I'm about to go to Florida. Oh, wait, he's here. Crazy. <laughs> Hello, Max. Hi, Max. Hello. talking about how we did not know if you were coming so. <laughs> <laughs> welcome uh, yeah well i'm the man i'm i'm the host you say of, you're the man of the group i'm the host of the podcast <laughs> okay okay i'm the boss <laughs> you came up with the name but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but That's yeah oh i have well yeah tell us how you are first max why don't we do this on the podcast? Wouldn't it's that be already fun? recording. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, all this podcast. is the podcast. Well, let's do an intro first. Okay, we kind of already did without you. Damn, <laughs> that's <laughs> fucked. Wait, this could be. No, in. it's fine. It's fine. Okay. We can keep going. I'm Max. Uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kendall. I'm Sinclair. We're wow. here. And so this is Pocket. This is Pocket. Paint, Paint on. On canvas, on tape. Yeah. Woo. Okay. So, How am is I everyone? Now? Good. <laughs> 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 we are definitely are have not gotten into a rhythm with this yet, but it's fine. Um, um, I'm in Florida. Mm -hmm. Since you asked, look at the seashell art. Wow. Wow. Very, very Florida. I'm at my grandma's condo. It's pretty mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. How's your grandma? She's good. Yeah. I'm drinking. She's great, actually. <laughs> uh, she's very Jewish. Nice. Um, I'm drinking out of a mug that mm -hmm. you you freeze, like there's water in it, and then you freeze the mug. This is revolutionary. I kind of <laughs> want one. You freeze the mug, but like there's water in it. Yeah. So there's ice around it, and mm -hmm. so that when you drink something that like you don't want it to um Get you don't warm. want the water to like dilute it oh oh yeah then when you so instead of like ice cubes melting into it oh, it melts it just smart. stays in this container now what i'm doing right now is kind of silly yes <laughs> because i have water in it <laughs> yeah. um, but it does look cool but if you know like if you want hand? Yeah, it's cold. Uh, you know, if you want, but the, you know, you, you got this, you got the handle. Mm -hmm. nice. But you know, if you want to drink, uh, you know, some that'd be good for like coffee and stuff because watery yeah. coffee is disgusting. Well, they make um, for iced coffee, they make these like little ice, ice cubes, cubes like in plastic containers that you can mm -hmm. freeze. You could also, this, always, like, like, or, make this is like a beer stein, I think. Yeah, which is also but... funny. Yeah. yeah very anyway. nice thank you for introducing us to your mug yeah what, what's up wait sinclair i saw you have a new water bottle sinclair in high school for reference was would religiously 
was connected to her purple water bottle, yeah. which sadly died senior My year. My purple water bottle was not that of the highest quality, or maybe I just used it too much. It was, I actually had two of the same what water What kind bottle, was it? And both of them broke. I don't know. You've what definitely seen it like a million times. Now. I know, yeah. but I can't recall right now. Just, just it has like a flippy. about Kendall and me being in Paris, and I had this water bottle the whole time. Oh, yeah. And it has like a flippy lid on the top, and the lid always broke up um yeah. on both of my water bottles this is my new purple water bottle it's an algae it's wow. purple. Yeah. It has lots of stickers that are peeling off of it it's a special ll bean algae that Ooh, has she fancy. A wow. nice logo on it that you can't see but how's your water bottle journey been um it's been, it's been great i also have a Bowden one that's somewhere else it's a it's a narrow neck narrow yeah. neck algae those are my favorite i like the narrow neck yeah narrow mouth yeah perhaps. um yeah i very commonly spill water on myself so it's like that's that. my bottle journey very nice. Mm -hmm. nice it has a sticker on it i get a lot of um Bowdoin sustainability stickers mm -hmm. i am dating someone who works for our sustainability office oh I damn that's tea <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah green though. Crazy, one of my so this is my one of my buttons to burnt wooden carbon neutral since 2018 sticker and this is a remember these come from trees sticker that's wait to that's actually crazy though the doing has really been carbon neutral for that that's that's awesome kind of wild doing to good. them do you think um, that if people. you if you break out with him you're gonna be like anti-sustainability <laughs> You think you're gonna be like, well, I can't use these stickers anymore. You think you're gonna be like, we should pollute it as much as possible. And Claire's gonna become an oil baron. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that'd be That's great. The plan. That's the dream right there. That'd be savage. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of hilarious. Like a um that's what happens to Barney in fucking How I Met Your Mother. Oh. He's like a hippie, and then this girl cheats on him with a businessman, oh, yeah. and then he becomes oh. an awful dick businessman. Yeah. So, really, a sad life that he leads. Yeah, but it's fine because he's actually happily gay. So, yeah, yeah. IRL. Okay. Yes, obviously. IRL. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Should we talk right. about some art? Let's, yeah. Let's yeah. Wait. 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 I have. I have announcements first. Announcements. Yes, because we have a real podcast yeah, now. Yeah, you did such a good job. I was impressed. Yeah. Kind of shocked, actually. I didn't it, think like, it was happen that fast. Weirdly came together so quickly I can't and so we got easily. A million views. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have like twenty something. Views. Violet Miller sent me the views. cutest little DM. Um, <laughs> it was like, "You and Kendall are such a great team. I'm excited about the podcast." <laughs> well, wait till she sees that I'm in it. <laughs> Yeah, so we got a logo, which is kind of the thing I'm the most excited about because it makes us feel official. Um, and it was like so kindly designed for free. And I offered multiple times to pay her and she was That's like, no. Yeah, and I was like, she, you're she, wild. Um, I think she ran cross country a mm -hmm. year that I was not running cross country. Maybe our She's senior year, she ran cross country. Very sporty. So her name's Hope Lior. I think it's Lior. That's her Instagram handle, at least. Um, and she also has a podcast, and it's called Wellness Matters. And I listened to it today on my way to work, and it's so good. And she's fucking 16, and she's killing it. And by herself, also. That's crazy. And, like, she interviews, like, legit guests about, like, wellness. And the one I listened to was about, like, yoga in underserved communities um it was so cool it was so fascinating so 10 out of 10 highly recommend but yeah she like wouldn't let us pay her and was like you can give me a shout out <laughs> like, <laughs> okay <laughs> so i've just like put her name on everything um yeah and <laughs> so that was very cool she also <laughs> yeah no we love hope I'm 10 out of 10 by hope. yes it is um and we should also have her on as a guest one day i want to do that um and yeah so that's that she also told me that when she um, comes on we should critique yeah. her logo <laughs> her logo is so good though it's very cute everyone should follow her so they can find yeah. out what logo she has um 
Okay. Um, she also told me about like getting on to actual podcasting platforms because I did the YouTube thing. I was editing for like seven hours on Sunday. It was fucking madness because I no longer have iMovie because all of my Macs have broken. Um, so I learned a whole new editing software, which was quite a lot of work, but it happened. Um, and I don't even think I'm going to ever use it again because it's not that great for video editing. So that was cool. But I did get it uploaded and I was proud. <laughs> um, so we are on YouTube now, but I think soon when I have the time or if someone else wants to do it, we will get on other podcasting platforms um, so that everyone can listen wherever they are all the time. Um, yeah, those are my announcements. But also I just want to say like how awesome are like announcement reception was like when I posted something on my story like everybody was like DMing me like so kind and the prep community really fucking pulled through and I was like wow guys yeah. I was like not expecting that either I was like we're just gonna do a podcast and it'll be fun and maybe people will listen and then people were like super excited about it and I was like that's so nice <laughs> so that's cute yeah um, it was very sweet. Stickers and magnets from prep today. Things oh really yeah. Very shiny wolf. Ooh. I like wolf. the I like the logo. Yeah. It's very basic though. But yeah, but at least it's solid. Yeah, it's much better than any of the like the cowboys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Now should so, we yeah. talk about art? Now we can talk about art. <laughs> um. Should I? I'm willing to go first. Should I? Um, yeah, I like you going first. We can just make that a thing. Or should we describe it first? What's more fun? Whatever you feel. Um, I'm going to screen share it because okay. there's a lot going on. Um, so we talked last time about the Marode altarpiece because Kendall showed it in oh, yeah. conjunction with the Maryland diptych because it you is. You should be able to share now. Of a nice classy triptych. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about it because it's so cool. Yay! I'm excited. We're gonna come over here because this is where I want to be. Awesome. So this is the Marode altarpiece. It's also called the Annunciation Triptych, um, which is a more descriptive name. Marode is just the name of like someone who owned it at some point. They're not even who commissioned it. Whatever. Um, but this is a piece of art that is oil paint on wood. Um, it's like oak wood, I think. And it's a triptych, which means it's in three panels and they actually are on hinges so you can close it, um, which is important because this is a work of art that would be used for like personal devotion and was closed at certain times. I think it was like only open during the mass or something like that. Um, but this would be like used in someone's home and it was portable, it's like, four feet long when it's open and like two feet tall. Um, so it's not huge, um, but still significant. Um, but also keeping that size in mind, there are a lot of very, very small details, um, which is uh, representative of the style of the period of this work, which is um, from the early Renaissance in the Netherlands. So this is um, part of the Northern Renaissance. Um, so this was around 1430. Um, mm -hmm. And this is currently at the Met Cloisters, which is fun. Uh, in I saw it there. It's small. Yeah. But so cool. Small girl. Smaller than you mm -hmm. might think. Um, and yeah, so this triptych is depicting um, the Annunciation, which is the moment in the New Testament where Mary learns that she's going to have a, a baby Jesus. Um, and so the angel Gabriel comes to her and tells her of this, this exciting news. Um, and so we see that scene in the middle panel, the, the bigger, more square panel. Um, and so Gabriel's in blue and he's got wings. Um, and then Mary is lounging over here reading her little personal devotional. Um, and there are lots of objects around, which we will talk about in a bit. Um, part of this style is that um, people in the North were really excited about their oil paint. And so they sort of got really into lighting effects and texture 
and lots and lots of detail. And a lot of these paintings from this time in this region have a lot of detail and all of it has some sort of greater meaning. Um, and often like every object will have a spiritual meaning. Um, so there's a lot of symbolism in the imagery in these paintings. Um, and that is true of this one as well. Um, in the right panel, we see Joseph um, as a carpenter doing some carpentry work and he's actually making mouse traps, which is also significant. Um, and then on the left panel, we see what are assumed to be the donors um, or the people who commissioned this painting. Um, and they're sort of a part of this scene, witnessing the scene, but not quite in the scene, which was sort of a kosher way to like put yourself in the scripture. Um, and photo bombing. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting that this was like, okay, um, like we're watching, but we're not there. Um, and but also was being, like kind of yeah. bold to be like, we were there. <laughs> like, yeah. well, be like, we seems, saw like, Mary. <laughs> yeah. This so, seems similar to last time and like also something I studied in my medieval theater class. Mm -hmm. It's like, they just want to like make it theirs. Like just like this, even this middle panel me is like absurd because it's like, Mary wasn't like in this room. It's just like, look at this room. Look at this room that she's in. Yeah, and it's so much it's more like modern. So, so much more detailed, so much more like nice. Yeah. Like look at all, look at the clothing they're wearing. Look at like the architecture. It's like, Mary was not any, like whatever she was like is not nothing like this. No. Well, also, like, there's a full-on angel in her room, and she's just chilling. That's what yeah. I love. <laughs> she hasn't noticed him yet. She's just well, so devoted. The way the, like, Bible, yeah, the way the Bible, though, describes angels is fucking wild. Like, I don't know if you guys have read it, but they have, like, multiple legs, and they, like, or no, they have like wheels that they roll on, and they have like wings of fire and multiple heads, and yes, like they're... they're very scary. And so it's really funny to me that she just like does not give a shit. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's possible that the like background stuff and this room is like in the contemporary style instead of like sort of Mary in the like for. 1800s Netherlands context um, as opposed to trying to be like biblically accurate um, mm -hmm. which is also something that we like see a lot in depictions of like biblical scenes um, over time people sort of yeah. putting the scripture in their own context um, and yeah so let's talk also a lot of people said that it's possible that like the commissioner's wife and the soldier in the back were like painted in afterwards, which is also kind of interesting. Um, hmm. Cause you know, we don't love women here. No. Um, no. And I wonder what would have been there had they not been there. Yeah, I think that that's what people think because she's so like crowded and it mm -hmm. sort of feels like he's like central and could have been like enough to fill the panel also his um, proportions don't make sense and he's kind of just a big black blob it's true yeah so. Something unless he's else. kneeling at the door which would be weird but yeah. yeah something else that is characteristic of this time and place is sort of um a lot of attention to detail so we still have that sort of renaissance like observation of the world but there's like no, no care about like mathematical proportions or linear perspective. And like, you can see that in this room, like the table is not at the same angle as the floor and it looks like a trapezoid and maybe the floor is slanted. Um, and so you don't get that same sort of like mathematical view of the world that you get in Italy at the same time um, because we're in a different region and there are sort of different conventions in the art. Um, and eventually they'll come together the oil paint and the perspective and it'll be awesome mm -hmm. um but we're not there yet yeah. um and you can see that like in the the folds of the fabric they're really interested in lighting but they're not that interested in like how people's bodies actually look or how this fabric would fall um and so 
it's sort of like a, a trade-off there during this time. There's a lot of detail, but not a lot of um, accurate accuracy and proportions or like realism. Um, yeah, so let's talk about symbolism because there's a ton of it. Um, there are a lot of things that people like scholars argue about everything, but um, there are a lot of things that people like aren't super sure what they mean. Um, but some of the things people are fairly sure about are the lilies on the table, which are, I can, I think I can zoom in on this. So we have these, these lilies in the middle in this vase um, and lilies typically symbolize Mary's purity. And a lot of people also say that because there are three of them that could represent the Trinity. Um, Mary's- Oh, and one of them hasn't blossomed yet because she's mm -hmm. in a burden. There so, you go. Yeah. Um, Damn, that, is low. that was a good point, Kendall. <laughs> That's a good point, Kendall. <laughs> That's pretty good. There's also something about the candle, like that when a candle is lit, it means that God is present, or it's like a sign that God is present, but this candle is snuffed because God, like, because she now is, like, pregnant with Jesus, God is, like, physically present, and so then they don't have to, like, <laughs> indicate that, or, like, it's a sign that, like, they don't have to show that God is present in the candle because God is present, like, in her, um, which is a little funky. People seem to disagree Maybe. on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a lot to read into maybe. on a candle yeah but, yeah but it's like so prominent it must be yeah. something no um, definitely. there's like a wash basin and a towel in the corner which is also like purity um there's this little guy which might be my favorite oh um, this part's lit i forgot about him so we've got these rays of sun and this little tiny man holding a cross um and people think that this is the holy spirit um, sort of coming in to enter Mary, although it's sort of a, an atypical depiction because the Holy Spirit is usually a dove. Um, and so, I don't know, that's something. But it also talk. looks like a little baby, which kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, totally. Um, Joseph is making mouse traps, which are thought to be a reference to like the devil's mouse trap, um, or like the mousetrap for the devil. That's the line in something. I think it's St. Augustine. Um, there's some sort of like writing that has that in it. Um, not a not a biblical scholar over here. I apologize. Um, I don't also, know. <laughs> there are also people who think that like these tools that he's working with are a sort of like forewarning of the passion of the Christ. Um, and crucifixion and such. Um, there's a lot of discourse about the walled garden that the donors are sitting in because a walled garden is usually a symbol of like Mary's virginity, but because the door is open, <laughs> that seems like a little funky. Um, and so then people thought other things, but I don't remember what they are and I didn't write them down. But there's like a lot of discourse about what everything means because everything means something. But also just like even in like there's also just a lot of detail for the sake of detail and like <laughs> there are like people walking around in this city back here that are so tiny i love this city <laughs> but also yeah like when i saw this like it's small and like it's really hard to see them so it's like how the hell do they paint that like yeah yeah it's a pretty cool painting mm -hmm. i like it a lot um mm -hmm. I think it's interesting because like there's a lot of stuff that we're like that probably meant something but we don't really understand oh i have another mm -hmm. one The she's sitting in front of this dark fireplace which is supposed to be like hell but she is like blocking it so she's like the obstacle that like blocks people from from hell that's fun too what's up with the weird candles on the fireplace it's a great question i know it feels like a you know those books where you like look for <laughs> random objects or like it looks like a spot the difference is or something oh like, yeah 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 it's like so this painting would be a great one for that <laughs> if you did like a correct proportion version of this like look at these guys on the fireplace too i have like no idea what's going on he here. looks kind of like he has horns too so totally yeah there's like this window well, there's is not a candle window. on one of them which is weird mm -hmm. yeah well maybe they took it off to put it on the table oh yeah yeah 
That's true, that's true. Very often also like symbolized as a candlestick, like the candlestick for Jesus. So I read about that too. I don't know. There's a lot going on. Light of God or something. Um, I also am curious about the relationship between Mary and Joseph in this because like their relationship has always struck me as really weird because like I mean from my perspective and I I mean I literally wore my necklace with crosses today and it was because I'm doing something very sexual so I did it to be (laughs) silly but and I didn't know you were doing this but um and I, I do have some like Christian background and stuff, and I'm not saying that this is fact. So Christians don't get mad. Um, <laughs> this is my disclaimer. Don't get mad. Please don't get mad. If you do, I don't want to hear about it. Um, but, Christians, you can not quietly the Christians see you in your home. Yeah, you can be quietly mad, but forgive me because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, you but tell them. yeah, <laughs> but I've always thought it was weird because like. In my mind, it's like Mary and Joseph probably had sex and got her pregnant, you know, and somehow it became a whole other thing and they were able to make it Jesus and the son of God, but their sexual relationship, huh? It's a good like PR stunt. Yeah, right. (laughs) But um, so their sexual relationship is really interesting because Joseph is like, Loki cuckolded it by God <laughs> you know yeah. so it's like what's happening here also like they're in different the channels so it's like they're clearly not like that connected but they kind of are and like yeah I don't know Joseph's like the ultimate cuckold to me because it's like poor guy just gets like forgotten about and he helped Mary through her whole pregnancy and shit but I don't know that's a hot take yeah that's my hot take so beware christians <laughs> yeah i'm also i don't know if there's any sort of canon about their age difference but it feels like it could be different points in time because joseph mm. seems like kind of old yeah that's true he's like a teenager mm-hmm. um which is possible that that's the way it was but mm-hmm. not sure about that yeah yeah. You have any other thoughts, Max? Why is every every window that could possibly open open? <laughs> Probably to show more light, I bet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can or... show off your city painting <laughs> skills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's a nice day. <laughs> maybe. Gotta let I'm in, let in the little baby that. spirit. I'm just saying there's it's not just the door on the left. No, yeah. Or and that door's open. Right. Yeah. It's this one in the middle, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's true. Uh, the perspective is crazy. I'm just painting. I just want to say it's crazy, but I kind of love it. I think yeah. It's, yeah. it's the best part for me. Like, it's such a trippy thing because you initially look at it and you're like oh this makes sense and then when you look closer it's like what's happening well it's kind of like i don't know it's it's kind of it's kind of theatrical (laughs) (laughs) because you get to see everything you're like yeah just show me everything (laughs) and and i think like that's kind of i think like I don't know you think about like how it was displayed it's like just put up in this church where was this put up church it would be like in someone's home for their- in someone's home like mm-hmm. like it's like a display piece it's almost mm-hmm. like a diorama yeah you know yeah. it's like you want to see everything and it does like kind of look like you could like reach into yeah it, like, exactly a diorama. Like yeah, you, that's you, a good point. You, it's like you unbox it, like you fold mm-hmm. it up, you unbox it, like you want to see everything that's inside. I think mm-hmm. it's an interesting like uh, way to interact with a painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. There are some people write about how like one of the reasons for putting so many details in, or sort of like giving you that, like it it requires long looking, um, is to like keep you interested during prayer and sort of redevote you to. Um, like the spiritual meaning of the piece. And so you can sort of like spend a long time pondering it and that that could be like, like deep in your faith or your like 
It's like an Easter egg hunt. It's like an Easter egg hunt. It's mm-hmm. kind of a fun activity. Yeah. 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 So, and so uh, like very devoted Christian. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But also that like the Which first we all are. is <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but also that like the perspective is like a tool to be able to show off like all of these objects and all the things in the room we should rebrand as a specifically christian pot <laughs> we're only gonna talk about christian <laughs> art <laughs> we could do two jews and like a it's not even it's it's not even like for it's not it's like, it's just christian like it's not even like for like prayer or devotion purposes it's just like it's not like christian rock where it's like we need to make people more christian it's just like so why are we christian why we just do it because well and because it's for no audience whatsoever <laughs> for us <laughs> it's like well the, who's um, seeking out the christian podcast, that podcast that yeah. doesn't really care about christian values yeah the club I'm in is Not officially where we can we, we do care. Yes, true. Um, but the club that I'm in at Columbia called the Philalexian Society, which is the oldest club at Columbia Damn. since 1802, with wow. many well known people. That's in it. Old. Um, yeah, but now we officially call ourselves an Irish Catholic Society just for fun. That's good. So we, it could be something like that, you know. Yeah, they should yeah. pick a new denomination of Christianity every uh, year. <laughs> Just mix it up for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> We're throwing yeah. away all those beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> Divorce? Not this year. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, maybe. Next year, maybe. We'll see how we do that. <laughs> oh my god. I don't wait. Is 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 divorce still like? I don't know. <laughs> this is not <laughs> Divorce is still bad in the Catholic Church. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I think it's but mostly you can just it. Catholics. But you can do it, right? You can legally. It's just very frowned upon. Well, I, yeah, I guess there's no state that's like. Well, I mean, maybe the Vatican. I don't know. Can you not? Can people get, get divorced, divorced in the Vatican? The Vatican I, think I don't think people really live there that aren't. No, people live there. It's like a fully functioning city. How many people live there? I don't know. Let's. I'm gonna find out some stuff uh, about the Vatican. Do okay. it. Um, my last thought about this piece of art has to do with its economic context, and that is that during this time, it was a sort of it was a moment with a rising middle class um, that was starting to be able to commission art, and these commissioners were likely a part of that cohort of people who were newly wealthy um, or newly at least financially able to spend on on extravagant things such as this <laughs> to have in their homes. Um, and so that might also be part of the motivation to like include yourself in the work. Um, mm-hmm. That sort of like new power. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can't get divorced in Vatican City um, oh. because it is a Catholic-run city-state governed by the Pope. Okay, interesting. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and it says the majority of those who live in Vatican City are priests and the Pope staff. So right, I think it's right. kind of like a tourist city, except with Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone's like married there. Are yeah, they? probably not too many because yeah. it's mostly priests anyway. But there's 825 people that live there. I'm going to move there and try and get divorced. <laughs> as a just to cause and a to scene. make a podcast about a, it. Yeah. There's, there's going to be, well, it's not going to be that long. It's just going to be like, they said no. Like, that's going <laughs> to be the whole podcast. Podcast ideas with Max. Uh, they said no. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I like it. Well, we'd first have to get married under the Vatican Church, and they're gonna be like, "You're definitely not Catholic," and I'll be like, "No, <laughs> I am." And, and we'll, I won't even get to the second part. Maybe they'll do like a whole new Inquisition just for you, yeah. Max, to find I out hope, if you're I actually so. Catholic. That would make me feel really important. I know. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay, I'm done. I'm out of there. Okay. Oh, yeah. so, also, that painting was produced in a workshop. 
of an artist so it's mm. like under Robert Kemp or something like that but it was in his workshop and we talked about that some last time too um so like probably worked on by like apprentices and such mm-hmm. Those are all okay um I think I'm gonna wait to show you it until I talk about symbolism and then I'll show you everything. Cause I have a long description here. So I am doing The Swing. Um, it's French title is Les Hazards Heureux de l'Escarpolette, which means um, the happy hazards of the swing, which I think is a much for, more fun title than just The Swing. Um, it is by Jean-Honoré Fragonard um in six no 1767 um and it is 81 by 64.2 centimeters and i will i have a picture that shows the size of it so you'll actually get a sense of it um and i'm going to open with a long quote which is just a description this is from artsy.net and the writer is alina cohen and i got lots of my stuff from her so, thanks, Alina. Okay. <laughs> okay. At the center of the work, a young woman clothed in a billowing, ruffled ballet pink dress floats in a dramatically lit clearing, rocking above the ground on a crimson cushioned swing. She flings her kitten heeled shoe towards a mischievous Cupid sculpture while she gazes at the man sprawled in the bushes beneath her. Her paramour wears a pewter hued suit, extends a black, uh, what the hell does that say? Tricone hat? Yeah, okay. Into the bush and looks up the woman's skirt with what can only be described as the goofiest, most love-struck grin possible. In the shadows behind her, an older man, perhaps her cuckolded husband, we have a theme here, um, pulls the swing's reins. So now you have like an image in your head. But yeah, she's a great writer also. Loved that article. Um, Yeah, okay, so this is commissioned by uh, Louis-Guillaume Bayet with um, salacious intentions. Um, So we're already getting into the spiciness. Um, He basically, (laughs) he wanted a picture of him with his mistress um, that also had him looking up her skirt. Um, and that's what it said in her article. And then I found in another place that he also wanted her being pushed by a bishop. Um, <laughs> so like really can't get more scandalous than that um, at this time. But uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but because this is a scene like in a garden, it's like leisurely and swinging was a leisure activity for aristocrats before it was a thing on playgrounds for children. Um, why I don't know because it's not that expensive to make a swing but I guess maybe you have to have a garden to have a swing I don't know um but I guess they said that like in these paintings and Fragonard does a lot of paintings like this um and uh often in these like leisurely settings it's more acceptable to be like dirty and flirty because like it's not a formal setting you're outside you're swinging it's like it wouldn't normally be formal. So it's fine. Um, Okay. And this other artist named Doyen was first offered the job, but he turned down because it was too sexy for him. He was like, this will ruin my career. And then Fragonard was like, this is my specialty. Um, (laughs) So he took it on. Um, uh, I'll, I'll show you the painting now. Okay. This is the painting. Okay, um, I tried to make it as big as I could because I don't think I can zoom in, but because um, there's also a lot of details here and a lot of symbolism. Um, one thing I found that was cool is that like, interestingly here, like the woman is on top um, of kind of everyone. She's like, which also has sexual implications, but um, it's kind of cool because she's in like an active role, um, which is so not common for women in paintings. Like we so often see them like looking out of windows and like wanting to do things, but they never do things. 
but here she's doing a thing, which is kind of fun. Um, and it also kind of puts her in control. Um, we have a little phallic arm here poking out. Um, everyone described it as a phallic arm, so, you know, um, not just me. Um, this would have been displayed in cabinet, which is just cabinets, um, which were like intimate rooms, um, they call them. So like small rooms where you display, I guess your dirty paintings. Um, so I guess if you're rich enough, you have a room for everything, right? Um, yeah, this painting was also reproduced as popular prints later. So it like really spread around. People love this. It's a very popular image. Um, I think in large part because it's so like silly and fun, but also like colorful and it's just really appealing. And there's a whole narrative there. And I mean, Max will appreciate this, I know, but one of the articles I read also talked about how like drama never gets old. Um, and this is from 1767 and people still care about the affair in this. So just goes to show. Um, hey, what was that called out? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> hey. I know you like drama. Hey. That's all. That's all. I didn't what mean anything about? by it. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a slight, Max, I promise. Um, Oh yeah, and so I told you about the whole like people can be kind of um, sexual when they're doing leisure activities. Um, and one article also said that people could sneak around unchaperoned in the gardens when they were doing leisure activities. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you were against unchaperoned youth. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I have another quote here that says, her fertility rivals that of the garden itself. So she, um, and I'll get into this a little bit more in the symbolism, but she really looks like a big old flower. Um, she's very like fluffy and the petals look really, or the dress looks really soft and almost looks like petals. Um, it's like almost like a pink rose especially the way that like, and this is obviously very sexual, but the way that her skirt like opens and has lots of layers, like really looks like a flower. Um, and then you have the phallic arm going into it. Like it's, it's pretty heavy handed, honestly. Um, but yeah, okay. So we have like a love triangle, which also visually gives us a triangle. Um, there's, Oh, I'll tell you a little bit about Rococo art, which is what this is. Um, so I found out, which I did not learn in our art history class, um, Rococo actually comes from the word rokai, which is like a form of art with like pebbles and seashells and like all the stuff that they would basically put all over gardens. So like even here you see there's like some, I guess these were like myriads they said which is maybe a kind of mermaid or something um but on these kinds of like fountains and sculptures they would have like seashells and pebbles and things decorating them so that's where rococo comes from because gardens and such um and rococo basically i mean this is the epitome of it right here um it's lots of pastels it's very like soft and fun and you know, it's none of it is heavy. Um, and it really like was a reaction to Baroque art, which came right before it. And I always kind of forget what Baroque art is. I don't know if you want to give us a good definition, Sinclair. I don't want to put you on the spot, but. I'm like. Yeah, it's definitely like intense. Movement and drama. Yeah. And drama. Mm -hmm. drama. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so this is like a strong reaction to that. Um, but both do have lots of details and stuff. And um, I wrote somewhere later too that this also, like you can see this huge tree is also um, kind of foreshadowing romanticism, which is all about nature and like very nature heavy, nature centric. Um, so we're kind of getting a glimpse into that. Um, okay, I'm gonna tell you some symbolism now. So we have her swinging, which as I said, is a leisure activity. 
very aristocratic. You can tell by the dress and the hat and the way the men are clothed and the fact that they're just in a garden swinging period. Um, swinging also was useful because it allowed for seeing parts of the body that we normally wouldn't. So that's part of why it was so useful in painting. Plus I think it's a really great choice because you get such awesome like movement um, and the way the dress like reacts to it is so cool. And you really see like how talented he is at depicting like movement and light. Um, and I don't think I included them, but he had some other paintings prior to this where like, I think there was a seesaw and maybe another swing. And so you can see him kind of moving into this realm of like swing time. Um, there's a Cupid over here um, who is the god of like love and desire and the son of Venus um, and she could represent Venus also um, and the Cupid here is actually modeled off of this guy um, who is the in French it's l'amour menaçant which is menacing love but they call him menacing Cupid um, he's very also sexual which I feels so weird because it's like a baby like the way that Cupid's always like a really sexual being is like I don't know it's off-putting to me but I guess I don't know pedophilia also happened more than so I don't know um and he's got his like finger up here like very sneaky and in this one he also has his finger up so that's the big kind of um reference and some people think that he's like shushing these little puti max do you know what puti are okay do you want to tell him sinclair oh for the <laughs> listeners i know you love puti <laughs> <laughs> they are like um little babies that are like like just like generic filler babies but yeah. like there are a lot of puti and like the Sistine chapel ceiling just like babies around hanging yeah. out little puti so Puto is the singular Puti because it's Italian. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and he's like maybe shushing them because they're looking kind of sus up at her. Um, so there's some speculation that maybe he's like, shut up, we'll let them have fun. Um, so that's possible. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the garden's like a romantic site of the bourgeois escape. Um, there's lots of flowers, uh, which is virginity, sexuality, etc. Um, she also has, oh, it's hard to see, but it's right here. There's like a pink garter on her leg, which is like coming down. Very sexual. I mean, someone said this is the most obvious sexual thing, and I was like, I disagree, but whatever um because it's kind of hard to see but the people yeah. that are only listening kendall is showing porn right now <laughs> <laughs> literally literally at... showing porn. <laughs> yes that's exactly what it is and i've just been talking about it like it's art but it's actually just porn um it was strange that and max it's didn't porn. react though <laughs> well, i didn't um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and someone talked about how the pink garter is a rejection of, quote, the traditional constraints of female modesty, unquote. What's um, the normal garter color? I, I don't know. Well, no, I don't think it's a color. I think it's oh. the, um, the fact that it's like coming down. Oh, I see. Because um, you're not supposed to see people's garters. That's bad. What's a, <laughs> follow up, what's a garter? <laughs> A garter holds up stockings, so it goes right. around your thigh. It's the thing that in weddings, um, which is one of the most awkward traditions ever, by the way, but it's the thing in weddings where the husband will go under the bride's skirt and bite the garter and pull it so off weird. of her leg with just his teeth in front of everyone. So I've weird. seen it multiple times. It's so You've odd. Seen it? I've seen it in person. Who's out here wearing garters. Can they just make stockings? Hold up? <laughs> I think it's a wedding thing now, but it used to be for stockings. They didn't have elastic back then. No, I don't think so. Damn. Yeah. Um, and there's also where is he? There's a little white dog somewhere. Is it this? 
Is that a dog? Yeah, I think it's him. No, I don't want that. The thing came up so I couldn't see it. Okay. Um, yes, this little white dog, I guess dogs in general, but maybe specifically white dogs often represent like fidelity, loyalty. So him looking up at her also in a sus way. Um, and so maybe Cupid's also shushing the dog and he's like barking at her like, bruh, you're being cuckolded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, <Bruh. laughs> that. <laughs> okay um so for the style uh, we have some loose 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 brushwork which uh goes along with the content got lots of loose behavior going on um oh these were called boudoir paintings which i think goes with the whole like um cabinet thing um so these would often show women in their private chambers quote, primed or procured for a romantic liaison, unquote. Um, which also procured for a romantic liaison, such an odd phrase to me. But I guess that's what happens if you're a prostitute at this time, or maybe a professional mistress. Um, I don't know. Um, and yeah, they're pretty small. Okay, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let's look at some photos. So this is it right here next to some other Fragonards. This is in the Wallace collection in London, I believe. Um, so it's pretty tiny, which is cool because it's so detailed and like, I mean, a lot of this looks like a Bob Ross painting a little bit with the like way he does trees and stuff to me, but so detailed um, and so small. And the light is just so cool. I feel like you can really see it when it's small like that um but yeah you saw baby cupid and this is a very cool work that um is a reference to it obviously um this is by uh yinka shonabere um probably butchering the name but he's a british nigerian um born in 1962 and he describes himself as a post-colonial hybrid so that gives you kind of a window into what he's trying to do with this work. Um, so rather than the big pink dress, you have um, a dress made up of mostly African fabrics. And I think the fabrics are called like Dutch wax African fabrics, if I remember right. And I didn't read a whole lot into it because it's all about fabric. And I was like, this is a lot of details for me. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but you can research it if you're curious. Um, but yeah, so you have African prints, so he's bringing in like the African, but also it's Dutch wax, so you have this colonial aspect to it. Um, she also is darker skinned than the original, um, which has its own significance. And then, um, Oh yeah, so I, I wrote like, it basically turns the whole thing on its head um, and brings it into a more modern perspective. Um, I think it was made in the early 2000s. I didn't write it down, but I'm pretty sure. Um, and oh yeah, what's also really cool about this that I feel like we maybe didn't talk about in art history was um, because he chose to leave out the two men in the triangle and it's 3D, like you can walk all around it and you can literally be in the perspective of the men, which is kind of cool. Wow. Um, yeah, so if you want to be- dog. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess there's no dog. That's kind of lame. He yeah. looked at the dog. Um, it might've been a little distracting because it's pretty like pared down, but um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I want to go oh. see it. Um, and what else? Oh yeah, so we excluded the men in the garden. Um, someone else said it's like a different kind of decorative opulence um, and the audience is implicated because of that. And oh yeah, and she's headless, which is a thing. Um, some people think it might have to do with like guillotining and like foreshadowing the fact that after that painting was made, a lot of those aristocrats had their heads cut off. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that's all I have about that. Oh, it's in the Tate also, which makes me mad because we didn't see it at the Tate when we were there, but it might not have been there. Um, 
Oh yeah, and then I also have uh, some other references that exist. Um, I guess there is a scene in Frozen in which Anna is swinging and like, it looks very similar to this. I should find it, I'll find a picture and show you in a minute, but um, yeah. And also like Marie Antoinette and lots of like films and stuff have drawn from not only the swing, but also like lots of Rococo art. Um, oh wait, that's just my announcement. So yeah, that is The Swing by Fred and I. It's my bibliography, but yeah. Any other thoughts? There's no way that swing works. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think it does. I think you're right. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Really oh, smart. she's like swinging in front of the painting. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. That's funny. Yeah. Interesting that they That's chose to very put a children's character in that position. That is but... kind of, uh huh? Yeah. Hard to think about that. They made a choice. <laughs> they made a choice. They did. Not that surprised from Disney though, but yeah. Yeah. Good work, Kendall. Thank you. Oh, good work. This there. is a fun one. I I love that painting. And we also had like a lot of connections between ours, which was cool. Yeah, um, you should, um, have you been to the Frick? Yeah. You, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of Fragonard there, I think, and like other Rococo. Yeah, I have not been in a long time, but when I am back, I will go and see it. Yeah, there's a lot at the Huntington also. So if you're an LA person, the Huntington is open again. And Blue Boy, which is like, one, I almost did it, but then I was like, it's not as 